Good morning. Good morning, Bookie Monsters. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Bookie Monsters. My name is PK and it is Friday, January 26th and we are doing the morning show. How are you doing? <laughs> Did you have a good night? Are you glad it's Friday? I'm very glad it's Friday. It has seemed like a very long week for some reason. I don't know why. Hi, Kim. Good morning. How are you doing? Let's see, quick announcements. Uh, no sprints tonight, being Friday night, but uh, we do have sprints tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, and uh, they, those will go for five hours. So I hope y'all can come and bring a friend. Um, the more, the merrier. Let's see. Sorry, I'm doing a quick scan of some things here. Okay. Just tired. <laughs> I hear ya. All right, let me get rid of this banner. All right, so um, this is the last Friday that we are officially going to be talking about uh, the midwinter hist mist readathon that I'm sponsoring. Um, are free to read historical mysteries all year round. I would, they're just my favorite, and I am hoping that spotlighting them might bring some attention and interest into them. So, and I am admittedly, we all have our favorite types of books, and history wise, I lean more um, UK, and, uh, but there's others out there. And so I want to highlight some of the others that are out there. And we'll work from the bottom up here. All right, this first one is, um, the first book is The Bangalore Detectives Club. This is by Harini Nagendra. There are three books so far in this series. And uh, this is in set in the 1920s Bangalore. When clever, headstrong Kaveri moves to Bangalore to marry handsome young Dr. Ramu, she's resigned herself to a quiet life. But that all changes the night of the party at the Sentry Club, where she escapes to the garden for some peace and quiet, and instead spots an uninvited guest in the shadows. Half an hour later, the party turns into a murder scene. When a vulnerable woman is connected to the crime, Kaveri becomes determined to save her and launches a private investigation to find the killer. Tracing his steps from an illustrious brothel to an Englishman's mansion, she soon finds that sleuthing in a sari isn't as hard as it seems when you have a talent for mathematics, a head for logic, and a doctor for a husband. And she's going to need them all as the case leads her deeper into a hotbed of danger, sedition, and intrigue in Bangalore's darkest alleyways. Truly, with historical mysteries, you can focus on whatever interest and uh, historical period you like. Um, if you like Sherlock, there are tons. If you like Victorian, there are tons. If you like Regency, there are tons. So, that become one of my favorites as well. Awesome! All right. This next one is a series by Sujata Massey. She is a name in uh, the Mystery Circle for a very long time. 
not initially in historical mystery, but she has ventured into this. This is also set in the 1920s, but it's 1920s India. Uh, Praveen Mystery, Bombay's only female lawyer. Praveen Mystery, the daughter of a respected Zoroastrian family, has just joined her father's law firm, becoming one of the first female lawyers in India. Armed with a lethal education, legal education from Oxford, Praveen also has a tragic personal history, which makes a woman's legal rights especially important to her. Mystery Law has been appoint appointed to execute the will of Mr. Omar Farid, a wealthy Muslim mill owner who has left three widows behind. But as Praveen examines the paperwork, she notices something strange. All three of the wives have signed over their full inheritance to a charity. What will they live on? Praveen is suspicious, especially since one of the widows has signed her form with an X, meaning she probably couldn't even read the document. The Farid widows live in full purda, in strict seclusion, never leaving women's quarters or speaking to any men. Are they being taken advantage of by an unscrupulous guardian? Praveen tries to investigate and realizes her instincts were correct when tensions escalate to murder. Now it is her responsibility to figure out what really happened on Malabar Hill and to ensure that no innocent women or children are further are in further danger. Now, this one has been on my radar. I find the uh, covers to be gorgeous. I would, this one, not so much, but the other ones have such beautiful covers. For some reason, particularly, this one catches my eye. Just the colors, it's just beautiful. Now, this one is hopefully very well known. I've picked it because you don't get a whole lot of uh, Australian slash New Zealand historical mysteries. There's a couple out there. There are a couple out there. But this one's the most famous. There's 22 books in this Mr. Miss Friday Fisher series, and it has been made into a, a series. Um, which is where that cover comes from. The first book is called Cocaine Blues. It is also set in the 1920s. The London season is in full fling at the end of the roaring 1920s, but the Honorable Franny Fisher, she of the green gray eyes, diamond garters, and outfits that should not be sprung suddenly on those of nervous dispositions is rapidly tiring of the tedium of arranging flowers, making polite conversations and retired colonels and dancing with weak chinned men. Instead, Franny decides it might be rather amusing to try her hand at being a lady detective in Melbourne, Australia. Almost immediately from the time she books into the Windsor hotel, Franny is embroiled in mystery, poisoned wives, cocaine smuggling rings, corrupt cops and communism, not to mention erotic encounters with the beautiful Russian dancer, Sasha Delis until her adventure reaches its steamy end in the Turkish baths of Little Lonsdale Street. Tension and danger rise like steam, and Franny must save herself and other young women before it's too late. So again, different, different is the name of the game today. A Rising Man by Abir Mukherjee. I apologize. I'm saying these wrong. There are five books in this Wyndham and Banerjee mystery series. In the days of the Raj, newly arrived Scotland Yard detective is confronted with the murder of a British official. In his mouth, a note warning of warning the British to leave India or else. Calcutta, 1919. Captain Sam Wyndham, former Scotland Yard detective, is a new arrival to Calcutta. Desperately seeking a fresh start after his experiences during the Great War, Wyndham has been recruited to head up a new post in the police force. He is immediately overwhelmed by the heady vibrancy of the tropical city, but with barely a moment to acclimate, acclimatize, should be just acclimate, yeah, okay, or to deal with the ghosts that still haunt him. Wyndham is caught up in a murder investigation that threatens to destabilize a city already teetering on the brink of political insurgency. The body of a senior official has been found in a filthy sewer. A note left in his mouth warns the British to quit India or else. Under tremendous, tremendous pressure, 
To solve the case before it erupts into increased violence on the streets, Wyndham and his two new colleagues, Arrogant Inspector Digby and Sergeant Banerjee, one of the few Indians to be recruited into the new CID, embark on an investigation that will take them from the opulent mansions of wealthy British traders to the seedy opium dens of the city. I've never known how to say this word. I apologize. The Frangipani Tree Mystery by Ovidia Yu. There are seven books in this Crown Colony series. And we've bumped up to the 1930s. Introducing amateur sleuth Su Lin, a local girl stepping in as governess for the acting governor of Singapore. 1936, in the Crown Colony of Singapore, and British abdication crisis and rising Japanese threat seemed very far away. When the Irish nanny looking after acting Governor Palin's daughter dies suddenly and in, in mysterious circumstances, mission school-educated school local girl Su Lin, an aspiring journalist trying to escape an arranged marriage, is invited to take her place. But then another murder at the residence occurs, and it seems very likely that a killer is stalking the corridors of Government House. It now takes all Su Lin's traditional skills and intelligence to help British-born Chief Inspector Thomas Lefroy solve the murders and escape with her own life. Again, very pretty covers. Sorry, I'm shutting down some tabs here. A little, a little closer to home. This is a series by Barbara Hambly. There's 20 books so far. She is still writing this in the Benjamin January Historical Mysteries, set in the 1830s New Orleans for the most part. It is 1833. In the midst of Mardi Gras, Benjamin January, a Creole physician and music teacher, is playing piano at the Salle d'Orléans when the evening's festivities are interrupted by murder. Ravishing Angelique Crozat, a notorious octoroon who travels in the city's finest company, has been strangled to death. With the authorities reluctant to become involved, Ben begins his own inquiry, which will take him through the seamy haunts of riverboat men and into the huts of voodoo-worshipping slaves. But, as, but soon the eyes of suspicion turn toward Ben, for black as the slave who fathered him, this free man of color is still the perfect scapegoat. Barbara Hambly also has a very, she has a couple other historical series. One that I wish she would have continued um, is um, John Adams' wife, Abigail. Abigail Ada Adams is, and it's set during the revolution, American Revolution. I think there's only like three or four books in that series. I wish she had continued it. Uh, still in the U.S., but if you want a little Western flavor, frontier flavor, uh, this is by Steve Hawkinsmith. There are seven books in the Homes on the Range series. It's 1893 and Wandering Cowboy Brothers Big Red and Old Red, Emling Meyer, are down to their last few pennies. When a job becomes available at a ranch run by a competent and enigmatic foreman, neither brother can say no. Although the work is tiresome and their boss is bad-tempered, they have a welcome distraction. The Sherlock Holmes stories Old Red has come to love so much. But when someone discovers a dead body on the ranch, a menacing game is afoot. Old Red is determined to catch the killer using Holmes' infamous methods, and Big Red is dragged along for the wild ride, whether he likes it or not, while his brother tries to deduce his way to the truth. Can Old Red and Big Red solve the mystery with stampedes, wrestlers, Holmes-hating aristocrats? And a cannibal named Hungry Bob standing in their way. As I've mentioned before, I live in Montana, so cowboyish stuff is not totally interesting to me, but that is an interesting concept. Uh, another US one. I was going for some US here for a bit. Um, Walter Mosley, huge, huge name in mystery. And this series uh, 
features Easy Rollins. There are 15 books in this series so far. And it, this one was made into a movie with Denzel Washington and Don Cheadle. Set in the late 1940s in the African-American community of Watts, Los Angeles, Devil in a Blue Dress follows Easy Rollins, a black war veteran must, just fired from his job at a defense plant. Easy is drinking in a friend's bar, wondering how he'll meet his mortgage when a white man in a linen suit walks in, offering good money if Easy will simply locate Miss Daphne Monet, a blonde beauty known to frequent black jazz clubs. Um, along the same lines of this, there are several. I don't, I don't have them here. I can maybe add them, and then this can be made public. Um, set in like Harlem and the jazz. Uh, historical era too. A Beautiful Place to Die by Malin Nunn. Oh, what, uh, what reminded me. Uh, four books in this series set in the 1950s, Apartheid South Africa, featuring Detective Emmanuel Cooper. A man caught up in a time and place where racial tensions and the raw hunger for power make life very dangerous indeed. In a morally complex tale rich with authenticity, Nunn takes readers to Jacob's Rest, a tiny town on the border between South Africa and Mozambique. It is 1952, and new apartheid laws have recently gone into effect, dividing a nation into black and white, while supposedly healing the political rifts between the Afrikaners and the English. Tensions simmer as the fault line between the oppressed and the oppressors cuts deeper, but it's not until an Afrikaner police officer is found dead that emotions more dangerous than anyone thought possible boil to the surface. When Detective Emmanuel Cooper, an Englishman, begins investigating the murder, his mission is preempted by the powerful police security branch who are de dedicated to their campaign to flush out black communist radicals. But Detective Cooper isn't interested in political expediency and has never been one for making friends. He may be modest, but he radiates intelligence and certainly won't be getting on his knees before those in power. Instead, he strikes out on his own, following a trail of clues that lead him to uncover a shocking, forbidden love in the imperfect life of Captain Pretorius, a man whose relationships with the black and colored residents of the town he ruled were more complicated and more human than anyone could have imagined. Again, four books in that series. Which reminds me, let me do a quick scan here. Oh, one that came to mind. There it is. All right. Um, speaking of Africa, um, this is a series by Suzanne Aruda. Seven books in this series. Jade Del, Jade Del Cameron is the uh, sleuth in this, and it is uh, right after World War One. Let's see if there's. If you uh, sort of, if you like the uh, out of Africa movie or setting, uh, this is very much similar to that. Um, after driving an ambulance along the front lines of World War I, she can fire a rifle with deadly precision. In fact, uh, Karen von Wixen, is it, um, is mentioned as being in the area in this, in this book. Uh, can fire a rifle with deadly precision. Still suffering trauma from the Great War, she sets off for Africa, determined to fulfill a man's dying wish never expecting to become involved in murder. Rich with romance, mystery, and adventure, Mark of the Lion introduces a fascinating new heroine and explores the elusive heart of, compelling in, of a compelling and exotic world. Darn, we're running out of time. Let's go to this one. 
uh, Singapore Sapphire Four so far in the series by A. M. Stewart. This is Singapore, 1910. Desperate for a fresh start, Harriet Gordon finds herself living with her brother, a reverend and headmaster of a school for boys in Singapore at the height of colonial rule. Hoping to gain some financial independence, she advertises her services as a personal secretary. It is unfortunate that she should discover her first client, Sir Oswald Newbold, explorer, mine magnet, and president of the exclusive Explorers and Geographers Club, dead with a knife in his throat. When Inspector Robert Coran is put on the case, he realizes that he has an unusual witness in Harriet. Harriet's keen eye for detail and strong sense of duty interests him, as does her distrust of the police and her traumatic, traumatic past which she is at pains to keep secret from the gossips of Singapore society. When another body is dragged from the canal, Harriet feels compelled to help with the case. She and Coran are soon drawn into a murderous web of treachery and deceit and find themselves face to face with a ruthless cabal that has no qualms about killing again to protect its secrets. And this one I have, I've not read it yet. Um, this is seven books so far in the Jewish Regency Mystery Series. The first book is called Tempest in the Tea Room. This is by Libby Astaire. Murder is rife and so is the fun when a crew of quirky characters set out to solve a slew of crimes causing havoc in Regency London's Jewish community. Lady Marblehead is not pleased. In fact, she's furious. Not only is someone trying to poison her, but the impertinent scoundrel is after her jewels, too. All the clues seem to point to her new doctor, a young Jewish man recently arrived in London. But is he really the one responsible, or is there some darker, more malevolent force at work? It's up to wealthy widower, widower turned sleuth Mr. Ezra Milliman to find the culprit before the poisoner strikes again. And the other three we didn't get to. Barbara Cleverly, Cleverly has a great series. The first book is The Last Kashmiri Rose. Uh, classic, The Mamre Zap series by Michael Pierce. And um, if you are interested in, say, uh, just 22 books in this series. Holy moly, I'm behind. Uh, by I.J. Parker. Um, this is 11th century Japan, if you are interested in that. This first one is called The Dragon Scroll. So, and of course there's Roman, there's Greek, there's Egyptian. Um, again, historical mysteries are just amazing in what they all span, investigate, etc. That's, that's why I love them so much. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. And if you're watching it now or later, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Not a commercial. Uh, there we go. Real live book news today. All right. Um, so I hope you have a good Friday. If I don't see you this weekend, I hope you have a good weekend. I hope you're reading good books. And uh, it's okay to set it down if you are not enjoying it because books are amazing and fun and informative and entertaining and all wonderful things um, and touching minds with other people across the centuries if that is something that you are into it's just, they just blow my mind i love them I, and if you're watching it you probably love them too uh, and as the banner says here don't be a bookworm be a bookie monster nom, nom, nom. have a good day and god bless